John Smoltz, the Hall of Famer, has been talking about this for years with us, that these kids come up now. And, and if you're the parent of a kid who's, you know, going into his teenage years, you know, you pitch counts and how hard does he throw? We're all about velocity. It's not about velocity. It's about location, and it's about preservation here as well. You can throw hard. You can get Tommy John. You can get Tommy John surgery a couple of times. But these kids now, it feels like if you don't throw 95, then you're not going to go to the show. And that's a big mistake. Big mistake on baseball's part that that's what they look for. Because that, that's the first thing they look for with a pitcher, velocity. What kind of velocity do you have? Some of the greatest pitchers in the game had location. Now, you, and what pitchers will tell you is that you climb the ladder. Like, if you can go up to 94 but go down to 79 with your pitches, you want variance there. These guys just go, I'm, gonna, I'm coming in and I'm throwing 98. If you want to go get it, go get it. But you know what? The hitters will always win when it comes to, you know, these pitchers. The, these pitchers can't last. Just can't. Yeah, Paul. It feels frustrating as a fan because there's no, it seems like there's no perfect way to handle a fastball pitcher. Syndergaard, they just let him pitch. They never really put him, tell him to calm it down. Then you go back to, remember the Yankees had Jabba Chamberlain, who yeah. was a young fireballer, and I loved his game. Everyone loved him, and they overmanaged him. They always, it was always a pitch counts and innings, and he never got to where he was supposed to be as a pitcher. And it's almost like, which do you do? Do you just let him play or overmanage? Well, I don't know where it starts where that's what we ask pitchers to do. Because if I was teaching somebody how to pitch, I would teach them how to pitch. I would have them watch Greg Maddox. Maddox came up and he threw 96, 97 miles an hour. And then he learned how to pitch. And his philosophy was, I'm going to have you get yourself out. I don't have to throw. Maddox would throw under 100 pitches in a game. But it was all about location. Where am I going to throw it? Now, not everybody has the location of Greg Maddox, obviously. But you, you have to still learn to pitch. Even John Smoltz, who had better stuff than Maddox and Glavin for the Braves, learned how to pitch. You can't just you know go up there and just fire. You can't. Because eventually, they're going to catch up to your fastball or you're going to blow your arm out. Because we, we're testing the physics. We're, 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 we're testing the body right now in baseball. Yeah, McLeod. It's part of it like marketing. Like, he's Thor. Yes. He was on our show. Yeah. Where a, another great pitcher who throws breaking stuff is not going to be on our show. It's like a big hitter in football. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it, you want to come out and see something that you don't see normally. And, uh, you know, Jamie Moyer lasted for 25 years in Major League Baseball. <laughs> and he was throwing 79 miles an hour. You know, he was he was throwing salad up there. But if you get the guys who throw fast, you know, Aroldis Chapman, we want to see that. Nolan Ryan is the anomaly. To be able to do what he did for as long as he was doing it is pretty remarkable. But these pitchers nowadays, it just feels like it's go out there, throw as hard as you can for as long as you can, and then we'll come in and bring another guy who can go out and throw as hard as he can for as long as he can. And then we'll do it again, and then we'll eventually get to our bullpen, our closer. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.